Merry Christmas. And so wonderful to be together this morning. And I want to say Merry Christmas to everybody watching on YouTube. Uh, I was excited to see on Christmas Eve that we had 48 households so far have watched our Christmas video. And so when you think of the number of people that might be, that's 48 households with sometimes more than one person there. So our church is still reaching out to people uh, through the airwaves and uh, wonderful to see you all today and to be together in church and to send our love to everybody watching on YouTube this morning. First thing I wanna do is light our Christ candle as we worship in the light of Christ. That is just, I, I love, as I was saying Friday night, I just love the Advent wreath. It always just kind of makes me happy, and it reminds me of Christmas's past here in this church, and all the different families who've gathered around there to light those candles. You think about it, you've been around here for a while, all those different families, and, and I think about the people who've been at these Christmas Eve and, and the Christmas season, and they're here, they're still part of our church. They go on through us. And so it's a blessing to be here together today and to be able to worship God together on the very last Sunday of 2021. We've made it through that whole pandemic year and we're still here. A couple of announcements for you today. Our pianist Marlene Fissel has the flu. I just got a call this morning that she was ill. And so we're gonna pretend like we're visiting friends singing them Christmas carols. And I'm gonna lead you a cappella uh, in singing the Christmas songs this morning. And luckily there are ones that we know really well. And so we'll be doing that this morning and we'll be keeping Marlene in our prayers. Uh, she was so disappointed not to be here. She's just really a wonderful new addition to our church. And Marlene, if you're watching, we love you and hope that you get better real soon. Last announcement this morning, I also just heard this morning of the passing of former Archbishop of South Africa, Desmond Tutu. He just died at the age of 90 and he's one of my heroes. Uh, what I really loved about this man, he took on the racist system of apartheid in South Africa, and he, he said that we must always confront oppression with love. He was committed to nonviolence in changing the world. He did not believe in violence, and he was inspired by Dr. King's commitment to nonviolence. And South Africa, that uh, apartheid system was overcome. And Bishop Desmond Tutu was a big part of as doing the best he could to keep it a nonviolent change in that country. Uh, he fought relentlessly, but always with his weapon was love. And one of my favorite quotes of his is this, when we see others as the enemy, we risk becoming what we hate. All of our humanity is dependent upon recognizing the humanity in others. We're living in a world where that's not happening now, right? It's us and them. And uh, it's a great reminder of all our humanity. We're all human beings. We have serious disagreements. But as Christians, we confront those disagreements out of love. We listen to each other. And of course, we don't sacrifice our principles, but we want to keep staying in contact and in communication with people. And I really appreciate Desmond Tutu. It's been very easy for him to hate the white racists in his own nation of South Africa, but he felt called by Christ to love. And that's what he did. And I give thanks for him this morning. And now I'd invite those who are able to stand for the call to worship.
The mystery of Bethlehem was long ago, they say. In each new heart that hears, singing, come, come, Christ is born. The child of peace and sacrifice. Let us worship God. First hymn this morning is number 22, Angels from the Realms of Glory. And let me put on my mask because when we sing, we are to wear our mask. And I, I'm going to come right down here with you all and get to my 22. Okay, let's do two verses, all right? Okay. And I think you'll recognize it once we start going, all right? Let us praise God. Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight o'er all the earth. Yea, you sang creation story, now proclaim the Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Shepherds in the fields of watching o'er your flocks by night. God with us is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Beautiful. <laughs> you may be seated. Oh, no, please stand. Please keep standing. I just remembered we're going to do the prayer of confession together. And, of course, that's in your, in your bulletin, as you know. Let us join together in prayer. Let us pray. God of Christmas joy, we, your people, gather in faith, hope, and love. The birth of Jesus has renewed our hearts and brought peace to our minds. Forgive us when we forget Christ's call to join him in sharing the good news of God's peace and justice. Renew our courage and trust as we navigate our way into a new year of challenges and possibilities. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now please join me in a time for silent confession. Friends, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was and ever shall be, it and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Ministry during the pandemic, I tell you, it's an adventure. It is an adventure. First lesson this morning is from, from Psalm 148. And this is, which will become very obvious, obvious, a psalm of praise. And it's a great psalm to hear on the brink of a new year. It challenges us to find the faith to praise even amidst hard times. The psalmist writes, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. 
Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he commanded and they were created, and he established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters in all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his saints, for the people of Israel who are near to him. Praise the Lord. Here ends our first lesson. Thanks be to God. It's very interesting. Uh, the lectionary takes us from the birth of Jesus Friday night to when he's 12 years old in the temple. And there's that, that whole period of Jesus' life where we don't know exactly what happened. But here at 12 uh, is a profound story of a mother's love and her awakening to the knowledge that her child is so special. Yes, she heard Mary's Magnificat of what her, of the birth that she was gonna to give to her baby and how special he would be, but that continues to unfold in her heart. So now this morning, we're in that same chapter uh, where all the Christmas stories were earlier in chapter two of Luke, which we read Friday night. We stay in chapter two for this story from Luke two, verses 41 to 52. Let us listen together for the word of God. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it. But supposing him to be in the company, they went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when they saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been looking for you anxiously. Jesus said to them, How is it that you sought me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying which Jesus spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. Here ends our second lesson. Thanks be to God. Many Christmases ago, when my son Casey was three years old, and my daughter April, an infant, and they're sitting here this morning, 21 and 18. Did I get that right? 19. 21 and 19. <laughs> With April in the shopping cart as an infant, and Casey walking beside her, 
They roam the aisles of the crowded store. At one point, Suzanne looked down and saw that Casey was gone. Now, some of you moms or grandmothers here today have been in that situation. Your kid was there, and the next minute, he's nowhere to be seen. Suzanne looked behind her. She looked ahead of her. She called out to him, Casey! Where is he? There's no sight of him. And no response, no response from Casey as she repeatedly called his name. Suzanne grew frantic. A woman working at one of the food sample stations noticed her distress and asked her if she was okay. Then she said she could watch April, who was asleep in the cart, if Suzanne wanted to go and look around for him. She also offered to go tell a store manager that he was missing and that they would shut the store down and lock the doors. Suzanne could barely hear her speaking because she was so upset. She was calling and calling for Casey when suddenly she saw him peek out from behind one of the tables that holds clothing in the store. Suzanne ran over to him and fell to her knees and hugged him. And then she told Casey never to do that again. Stay beside me. That she had been very scared. Friends, 2,000 years ago, a mother named Mary was frantic when she realized her own son was missing. We celebrated that son's birth this past Friday night. While Jesus was nine years older than Casey, when he went missing at age 12, he was not lost nearby. Mary's precious son, Jesus, all of 12, was in an entirely different city and zip code. Mary and Joseph had been on their way back to Nazareth, which is about 90 miles from Jerusalem, when they realized Jesus was missing. How could they have traveled a day's journey toward home without noticing their young son wasn't with them? It's because when people went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover, they traveled to and from Jerusalem in large caravans made up of extended family, friends, neighbors. It was a moving block party. While they were in one big group, Often the children ran, up, ran together up ahead or behind or stayed together, and the adults all enjoyed their, their talking, and the group just moved. So it wasn't common. It was common not to see your child until the end of the journey. When Mary and Joseph realized Jesus is not among the large group, they immediately turn around and with haste make their way back to Jerusalem. Now consider how nervous and frantic Suzanne became when Casey was missing for mere minutes. According to the Gospel of Luke, it took Mary and Joseph three whole days to find Jesus. Three days, moms and dads. Mary likely remembering that Jesus enjoyed going to temple to her great relief found him sitting there among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. People in the temple were amazed at a boy of 12 asking such penetrating questions and his unique ability to understand all he was told by the rabbis. But Mary's first words to Jesus weren't words of praise or adoration. According to Luke, Mary, like most mothers would, said to her 12-year-old boy, Jesus, Son, why have you treated us so? Your father and I have been looking for you anxiously. Jesus is very confused, for he assumed that of all people, his parents surely would know that in the temple is where God had called him to be. They were a tight family, and so it was very natural for him to assume, Mom and Dad know where I am. And so he was confused. So he asked his mother and father, How is it that you were looking for me? 
Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And he wasn't saying it uh, sarcastically or like a brat, like, how could you not know where I am? He truly thought they understood what he was understanding about himself. Mary and Joseph looked at each other confused as to what their son meant by this comment that he must be in their, his father's house. Jesus' life purpose, his very identity as the Son of God, the Messiah, would be slow to unfold. It's how life is. We slowly mature, our life unfolds, and we become the person God has destined us to be. And that was true for Jesus as well. Luke suggests that Jesus was moved by his mother's words and probably upset himself that he had caused them so much worry. He felt bad. For Luke says, Jesus from that day on was obedient, obedient to them. In other words, Jesus would from that day forth make sure his parents knew exactly where he was and who he was with. Luke then adds a poignant phrase which communicates the unique character of a mother's love, of this mother's love. Luke says, Mary kept all these things in her heart. The NRSV translation a little more poetic. Mary treasured all these things in her heart. Remembering him being lost, seeking him, finding him in the temple, seeing the people amazed at his intellect and at his understanding, seeing how bad he felt when he realized how upset they had been, seeing this young child of, child of 12, his promise unfolding what she had been told at her pregnancy, seeing that now coming, becoming real in the world, in her life, in Jesus' life. Friends, as I mentioned on Christmas Eve, sometimes we pastors talk about Jesus only as divine, as fully God. And we forget that our tradition teaches Jesus was also fully human. He wasn't kind of human. He was as human as you and me. He had the feelings we have. He had the doubts. He had the joys. And from the age of 12, we know Jesus sat at the feet of wise and learned teachers. You know, when we think of Jesus' wisdom, we always think of the 30-year-old the Jesus. But it was already at work at him at age 12. Those learned teachers, those rabbis, helped Jesus grow in his understanding of his faith, as well as the unfolding purpose of his life. Jesus amazed people, because most young people of his day had not brought a singular focus to their studies, to their relationship with God, which enabled them to speak and ask questions with such knowledge and depth. That fully human little boy was amazing people. They had not ever seen anything like it. Jesus also reflects the upbringing his parents gave him. He was raised in a house of faith, hope, and love by two parents who adored him. And that mattered to the unfolding purpose of his life, having that unconditional love there for him. Jesus was raised by a mother and father who taught him to be caring and responsible. And that's what Mary was seeking to do that day when she said to him, hey, do you know what you've done to your father and I when you went missing? She was raising him. She was teaching him to be responsible, to think about how his actions can affect others. It mattered that he had these two parents. 
It's important for us, I think, when we think about connecting with Jesus to realize that he was a kid and that he was growing. He was, his insights were growing and deepening his outlook on the world. His childhood wasn't just kind of a story, but it was a part of who he was. And so the parents he had, the teachers he had, they played a crucial role in his unfolding purpose as the Son of God. The Jesus that we see when we look in these windows, that was a Jesus who was blessed by his childhood and by his journey through the temple and beyond. I believe that when Mary was able to calm down that day, after her initial understandable anger and frustration at Jesus for dropping out of sight without saying a word, she too was moved by the speed at which her young son was growing and maturing intellectually and spiritually. I think about Mary looking at her young son and thinking, wow, oh, God must have a lot God's gonna do with my boy. She remembered, I think, the angel and the prophecies she was told. Imagine her seeing this now, taking, uh, just becoming real in the world. Our own growth and maturity in faith requires us not only to worship together, but to take time to reflect upon our faith and explore the teachings of our religion and scriptures on a consistent basis. The philosopher Aristotle has a great quote I love. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act or a moment, but a habit. We are what we repeatedly do. That's why parents have to say to their kids over and over, don't run in the street, you know, don't do this, don't do all these things that could bring you harm. As you repeat those messages over and over, it sinks into your kids, but you also repeat over and over besides the don'ts, the do's, reminding how much reminding them how much they are loved, whether it's your children or grandchildren, being, being a habit of sharing your love and your respect to your own children as they're growing. We are what we repeatedly do. And look at Jesus. He became, from a child of 12 to an adult, the person who became came out of the habits of what he did day after day. In our busy, challenging lives, let us make practicing our faith a daily habit through prayer, through study, through reflection, through mission, and yes, through worship. For such habits of faith will move us closer to being the person God has called each of us to be, wise, humble, generous, grateful, hopeful, long-suffering, and courageous. The very excellent character traits found in Mary and Joseph's son, Jesus. <clears throat> On this weekend where we have celebrated the birth of Jesus, given thanks for his mother Mary, I close with this brief anecdote about an interaction between a boy and his mother during a Christmas play. It's obvious in the story to see the love between this child and his mom, and as we think about the love between Mary and Jesus. The story goes like this. A little boy forgot his line in a church school play. He had one line. His mother was in the front row to prompt him she gestured and formed the word silently with her lips. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. 
her son's memory was blank, and he just looked at his mom like, I don't know what you're saying to me. Finally, she leaned forward and whispered his line, I am the light of the world. The child beamed, and with great feeling, in a clear and loud voice, he said, My mother is the light of the world. (laughs) Friends, on this Sunday, two days after the celebration of Jesus' birth, let us give thanks for Mary, who played a huge role through her love and devotion of helping Jesus to become the light of the world, a light of love and hope that burns bright today and forever. Merry Christmas. Amen. Now let us all sing together number 53, What Child Is This? And let's do all three verses. I love this hymn. What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping, whom angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch our keeping? This, this is Christ the King whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Why lies he in such mean estate where ox and ass are feeding? Good Christian, fear for sinners here. The silent word is pleading. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. So bring him incense, gold, and myrrh. Come one and all to own him. The King of kings salvation brings. Let loving hearts enthrone him. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Beautiful, well done. And I hope you were singing along at home, you watching YouTube. Now, friends, with the, in the light of the Christ light, let us join together in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your light and that out of your gentleness and goodness, you appeared in this world, not as a warrior or a soldier, a king, but as a baby in a manger. We thank you, O God, for all those people who had a part in Jesus' childhood and and helping to raise him, his parents, his neighbors, the rabbis, and others. We thank you that that child, as he continued to grow and understood the challenge, the call to live in this world as the Son of God, leading disciples in bringing a movement of transformation through the power of love, that he never looked back or wavered. He kept moving forward. We thank you, O God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that that Jesus, that Christ, continues 
to move us forward today in our caravan of this church family moving forward. Help us, O oh God, to continue to grow in our faith, to reach out, to be a friend to all. The words of Desmond Tutu to recognize the humanity in all people. This family, oh God, has challenges before it. We pray for Sharon Brown as she recovers from a fall, thankful that she didn't break any bones. We know it's, it's a, always a difficult time to be away from home and healing. So we bless you to bless Sharon. We pray for our pianist this morning, Marlene Fissel, that she will soon be over her flu bug. COVID has come to our church, oh God, not inside these walls, but to our church family. So we pray for Kai Karamitsos, the son of John and Kim, who was diagnosed with COVID after a ski trip. We pray for Nancy Skidmore and her daughter Tracy, recently diagnosed with COVID. We thank you that all three of them have mild symptoms and are doing well in quarantining. And we pray, oh God, that they would feel our love and support today. We continue in prayer for Clara White and Claire Chase. We pray, oh God, as your family for Therese T. Walt's daughter, Megan. We pray, O oh God, for Linda Busick as she continues to recover so well from her heart procedure. I pray, O oh God, for my brother Pete and his family who have had the flu this holiday season up in Minneapolis. Pray that they will experience healing. We pray, O oh God, for parents whose children currently struggle with challenges caused by COVID or mental illness or drug addiction or just, just the challenge of daily life in a nation where a pandemic has reigned and turned things upside down, created a new normal that kids are still reckoning with, both elementary school, high school, and college. Help us as parents and grandparents, oh God, to continue to reach out to our kids, that they may see that they have a foundation of love upon which they can stand, foundation built by our faith in you, a God of love. We thank you, oh God, for the life of Archbishop Desmond Tutu. He was such a force of love in this world we thank you for his courage in confronting apartheid nonviolently and being a role model, a witness to what, what Christ's power, Christ's love can accomplish in this world. Pray for his grieving family and friends. We pray, O oh God, <clears throat> We pray a prayer of joy for the gift of Jesus, gift that we don't find under our tree, but a gift we find in our hearts. We thank you for the gospel, for the writer John, who wrote, God is love, and he who loves knows God. Help us, O oh God, to love in 2022. Help us to be a forgiving, encouraging people. Help us to stand up for our principles and what we believe is right. And always to seek to be in communication with those we disagree with. We thank you, O oh God, for Mary and Joseph. What a challenge and a joy it must have been to be Jesus' parents. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, O oh God. So we look at Jesus. We see in part, we see Mary and Joseph, their parents. 
We see their values and their character. And we know, O oh God, that as the Son of God, we see, when we look at Jesus, we see you, Almighty God. And Jesus reveals your identity, your character, person of love and justice, commitment, transformation, forgiveness. Thank you, O oh God, for the gift of this day, the gift of this holy season, and for the gift that we know that as we move into a new year, we need not be afraid. For you journey with us. You help us, you help us to center ourselves and face our problems and challenges calmly, seeking answers. We know, O oh God, that you are with us in life and you are with us in death. But nothing can separate us from you. Thank you for the light of the Christ candle this day. Help us to take that light with us as we move into a new week. Hear us now, dear God, as we pray together, as Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us stand together and sing our closing hymn, number 29, Go Tell It on the Mountain. And that's a challenge to each of us this week to do just that. And really let me hear you sing so I don't have to hear my own voice. All right? I want to hear you guys. And let's do all three verses. Such a great, such a great song. I'm thinking right now when I looked at this song of, of all the years that we've caroled in nursing homes and uh, how moving it was. And uh, hopefully there'll be a nursing home where maybe this song can be shown as we sing together. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching or silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens, there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lowly manger, the humble Christ was born. And God sent a salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Now, friends, may the, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God be with us always. Amen.
Now let us sing together number 540. God be with you till we meet again. Loving counsels guide uphold you. With the shepherd's care enfold you. God be with you till we meet again. Merry Christmas. Merry Have a great week. Thank you for coming.